Hellenism and Judaism. By Hengel. It's a two, two volume work. Beautiful piece of work. He studies Hellenism and the Holy Lands, talks about it, has great sources, brings it together, but, all right, take that as a background. Let's go back to Philo. Philo was a Jewish philosopher, and he saw that the Old Testament is anthropomorphic, and it allowed a certain kind of identi identification with Judaism, and that identification didn't allow them to be more cosmopolitan. At this time, by the way, there are more Jews living in Alexandria than they were in the Holy Land. Right, they had been spreading around throughout the Mediterranean. And therefore, he began speculating on the following thought. He said, <clears throat> how is it that the Greeks are able to keep Homer, with all the anthropomorphisms, with all that strange uh, behavior of the gods, how can they keep their, their theology, their mythology, while still being rational? How did the culture develop an entire intellectual system with intellectual values of the highest degree and have a religion based upon Homer, based upon a crude mythology? So what he did is he started reading all of the people who were commenting on Homer, and he found the allegorical method. He said, that's what the Greeks have done. They have, through the use of analogy and using the, ano the uh, allegorical method, he changed into an allegory. He said, I know how to deal with it now. I will do with the Jewish Bible exactly what the Greeks did with Homer. Set up a structure of analogies, treat it as an allegory, and therefore we can be just like the Jews, upon me will be just like the Greeks, we'll allegorize the whole thing, and therefore show it as an intellectual direction, and we don't have to take it literally, and we can free ourselves from all the anthropomorphisms, and that's what he did in six volumes. Dionysius did the same thing, see? He went to the Old Testament and the New Testament. He pulled out all of the terms, and he did what Philo the Jew did, only he did it on the New Testament as well as the Old Testament. And when you read that, the key for doing that, the key for doing it is only in 10 pages. And that's letter number nine called Symbolic Theology. Today that's called hermeneutics, a hermeneutic principle that allows you to understand how to take those terms and understand them in non-literal terms and how to do it. So that's the ninth letter. Very beautiful letter. Um, ah, here we are. I have an extra copy of the letters if someone would like them after. But it's Xerox, but you should get the book. Um, I'm going to just read a few things first to, to show you how he links the idea of God with the good and the language he uses in order to build up an argument. All right, that's what I'm going to do. He who holds converse with God, comma, the good, must model himself most of all on the likeness of the good in so far as attainable and must know in his own conscience, in his own deeds, performed out of the love of the good. Likeness, hmm, the good, model, the steps up are modeling. You model each successive level.
What made David a friend of God? Only the fact that he was good, even good to his enemies. I have found a real man after my own heart, says he who is the lover of the good and who transcends good. A good law was laid out even for enjoying the care of one's enemy's oxen. Now consider Paul, everything that Paul said. What does what Jerusalem have to do with Athens? I remember all the statements about Pauline theology. You have them in your mind. Notice Dionysius now. The word of God celebrates all good men who neither suspected nor did evil things, nor followed those changing from goodness because of the evils of others, but who on the contrary follow those who made the evil good and simple in a divine way, giving to them their own manifold goodness and reasonably summing, pardon me, and reasonably summing them to its likeness. But let us raise ourselves to that which is above, praising neither meekness of saintly men, nor the good deeds of men-loving angels who take compassion on nations and plead for the good of their behalf, nor, and I'm skipping, nor praising other things regarding the good, deals, de, the good deeds of angels, such as the word of God, but, but receiving in peace the good, bringing rays of the really good and transgood Christ. Let us raise on these to his divine good works. This is not a sign. Is, is this not a sign of goodness beyond speaking and above knowing? That he made beings to be. Yeah, that's what it is. The one made being. Right? Made the beings of being. And having led all things. Right? And having led all things into being. That he wills all things eternally to be like himself. And to have things in common with him. Each according to its own aptitude. See. He's now going to go on a whole thesis of light. And Proclus is going to say in this structure that one way to look at this as this is light descends, beatific light. Divine radiance and luminosity spreads through the whole. <clears throat> That's the bind that keeps all the universe together. Therefore, he's going to use images of light. Dionysius is going to use images of light, radiance, the sun, Contrary wise, you're going to use the cave and darkness. And we're going to say, hey, I know that language that comes out of the allegory of the cave. That's right, he's using it in his back pocket the entire time. Now, He's going through a whole, a whole argument about the fact that there's a certain priest that denies, the, denies uh, a parishioner the opportunity to convert because that parishioner previously had stolen some things. And I'm skipping that. It's a very beautiful story because I want to get to this point. He's now looking at this entire list, the ministers, the priests, the bishops, John the, uh, John the evangelist, each class of beings around God is more divine in form than that which stands further away. And those nearer the true light are more full of light and able to shed light. Now don't take the nearness in a spatial sense, but according to the sense of the aptitude of each class for receiving the gift of God. For each class has an aptitude and a receptivity to the unfolding effluence. 